London's people would get so uh, so scared of moving from one side to the other, don't they? I mean, I, actually, someone did say today, "Oh, where are you off to?" I said, "I'm going over Archway." Blimey, you got your passport, that old one, you know. Ah, uh, well, it's, I mean, it's, but it's crazy because I was born over here, I live over there, you know. What I mean? so, but, but I mean, it's a, it actually, people out there, it's actually very small. It's a bit like it's another country, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're with Pat. Hello, Pat. Hi. Nice to meet you properly. Very nice to meet you. How are you? And uh, it's amazing, really, because we like we came out outside here and thought, oh, we want to do a night here. And then I was sitting out here talking to you, and I didn't even know you were doing That's right, it here. yeah, yeah. Like, we just moved in, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. How long have you been yeah. here, then? Um, we've been here uh, four months now. Right. And, um, yeah, it's is, it is good. It's uh, it, it's a change. It's North yeah. London, isn't it? You know, yeah. but um, I've been used to the West End, but um, this is where it's happening. North London. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming to see this fabulous band behind me. First of all, let's hear it for love. Let's hear it for peace. And now, let's hear it for the London Cowboys. I'm Steve Dior and you're watching Frock TV. So you're the legendary Steve Am Dior. I now a legend? Well, what happens you, just because you stay alive? Is that the reason? You've yeah. Got, it seems to be like that. Yeah. I mean, I want to know like how it's all this legendary thing. I've, I've been lucky to play with you guys, but fame was not something I really sort of... Chased. Chased. I didn't need fame. I'm a middle class kid. I wasn't hungry and working class like The Clash. Joe, of course. Oh yeah, very well. No, no, I, but I, I'm sorry. I just, you know, that's probably why Johnny Rotten hates me as well. Oh, that middle class privileged kid. Well, oh, fuck off. You know what? I'm sorry, but then I didn't have to sell out, then, did I? Oh, London well, the London Cowboys, Barry Jones is obviously not playing, he's got a work commitment, but I'm getting the band warm really for next year, because we talked about doing it after everyone else had reformed and we're the last band to do it, and we're not doing it from Stalgia. Basically, I've got Barry Jones and I've got these other guys over in Mystic because most of the cats are dead. And I was going to do a roll call, but it might take an hour to just read it out. Probably <laughs> <laughs> five? It's about 45 different members, and I might have missed a couple. Conflict I have, I always, it's always with drums. Yeah, but he's quite so, good because he, no, because no, he's, like, good, he's, no, he's no, just no, like he's, following he's, you. He's my Mitch Mitchell. I hate straightforward rock drummers. Like, it's not that like yeah. I hate them. Yeah, but but I like my stuff to swing. With a round of vocal, it's nice if a drummer can play with a vocal. Yeah, no, there are very few. There are, I mean, John Bonham and uh, and and um, who's the guy from Aerosmith? I really like. Uh, you got me there. <laughs> that, that guy, he swings. They're rock drummers yeah, that swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry Nolan obviously yeah. was a, was a yeah. jazz drummer, so I got sport. My first drum was Jerry Nolan. Yeah. And Arthur Kane, my bass player. So you know, 
I had the New York Dolls rhythm section, you know. And I stole Davy and I stole Davy Jansen's girlfriend. I said, I stole your band and your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> David. Didn't Arthur Kane wear roller skates on stage and he No, he wore two two. At once he rolled back oh he had he had these roller skates. I can't skates imagine Arthur rolled, rolled roller back skates because he was for his pistol and a rat, but he's he rolled tutu. back apparently he rolled back off the fucking stage. Do you know what? That's a story. That's a new Arthur Kane story, man. I've heard most of it from his, from his own mouth, but uh, a lovely man. I'm Pat from the Intrepid Fox, and you're watching Frock TV. You were the first original Intrepid. That's right. Yeah, uh, on Water Street. Yeah, which is it was in the heart of Soho. Yeah, I was there for um, 18 years. I went there in the late 80s. Back in the day, we Back wouldn't really go to the Intrepid Fox because it was a bit kind of a bit goffy for us. You know? <laughs> no, no, that's just what happened. It was a bit, a bit weird because it was a bit we were a bit punk, and you know, you know what it's like. At least we had the choice back then. You hit the nail on the head with the word choice. Yeah, the yeah. Choice, you know, which is it's it's been slowly taken away from uh, from people in the in the West End in Soho. Yeah. Soho was quite scary, you know, at the beginning. I mean, at the beginning of when I first went there. And, well, it, and I mean, it was, it was like exciting. That's it. That's what and, was good and, about and, it. You did have the choice because it was a bit like you, you couldn't really go in the other pubs because it was a bit <laughs> people didn't really like you. But it's got a bit homogenised, isn't it? I mean, homogenised is a great word. It's an awesome word. I used that word, you know, when I first got booted out of Wardour Street. Yeah. I was homogenised. It's the only thing I could say. The, B the BBC were, were interviewing me and all I could say was homogenised. Yeah. <laughs> Would you feel that you got squeezed out? So oh, definitely, home? definitely. Corporations, corporations. Yeah. Not, not well, my... of course, the 12th part the same, innit? I've got a, 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 a girl who works for me, who's worked for me for a few years now, and she came to London because of Tim Pan Alley. Right, right. Okay, yeah, nice. because of the Sex Pistols, Tim Pan Alley, Revolution, you know. It's history. It, it, it never goes. And, it's and, and they're, they're just trying to they're just trying to like develop it, over develop it, and um, it's taking away the character. They can't afford to go to the fucking football no more because it came along with the paper faces and replaced real boots with designer laces. Took the people's game from us, turned into a money circus. Built their boxes smart and neat, lost the atmosphere of the man in the street. Teaching children different ways is a team that pays the highest wage. Forget that crest upon your chest, loyalty's been laid to rest. Capitalistic corporate, unless you're rich, the turnstile shut. Camaraderie of the working class is now Sky TV and a pint in a glass. Foreign teams in English league, one week, two games, and got fatigue. Players used to play with guts, now they tell themselves like common sluts. FIFA's gone and sold its soul to the money men with just one goal. Its ugliness is a crying shame. Our once beloved, most beautiful games sold out. We're really excited to do some nights here and hopefully yeah, they'll no, go I'd... well. And, uh... I'm really, really glad to have you guys here. You know, as I say, it's part of a, it's part of our, 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 our new direction, going back to the roots, basically, Wicked. and um, keeping a, keeping the tradition alive. You know, and if it's not a place for us in Soho, then we'll make our home wherever it, it may be. They were asking me, why have you moved to Archway? It's supposed to be Soho, and I said, well, we just decided to move with the Soho people rather than the buildings. Well, we, you see, the thing is, we've taken we've taken our regular crowd with us from Soho. And um, they've, they've stayed with us, and I love Soho. It was a huge wrench for me to, to move from, from nearly 30 years living there. And um, But at the end of the day, you've got to go, you know? I mean, uh, I'm not going to stay somewhere I'm not wanted. Yeah, yeah. and for me anyway, not Soho is not, not the stuff. same as it was. It's fancy restaurants, it's clubs I can't get into, and it's just not what it was. work at the cockpit theatre and just before Christmas we found a girl in the car park and we brought her in and she was 22 and she was called Kinga and she was from Egypt originally which has been in London about seven years uh, she was sleeping rough she'd fallen through all the cracks like you can uh, she was a law student she was at uh, private law college 
And um, we called the college and said, do, do you know what's happened to Kinga? Because we've got her. She's very cold, very cold. But we've got her, we've got your Kinga here. She's 22, a bit freezing. Apart from that, she's all right. They said, yeah, we know Kinga. They said, well, can you come and help? They said, no, better call the police. Kinga's might have a bit of a background. I said, well, I'm sure she's got a background. Everybody's got a background. So we called the police and the police came. They were very nice and they said, okay, we've referred Kinga to a uh, street charity. And we said, okay, that's great. When are they going to come? And they said, well, um, she'll have to go back on the street. And we said, well, where's really cold? They said, well, yeah, but they won't pick up from an address. So she's got to go back on the street. So Kinga went back on the street that night. We gave her a duvet, like they um, And the next day she died. Oh, God. And the next day she died. Now, she died. Now, Kinga had a bit of a history. There were there's some drugs and some relationship breakdown in the background. But we all know, because we met her, that we know that her biggest problem was homelessness. And if she'd have somewhere to go, she would still be alive. <laughs> together actually that was the best thing you must stay together and we got them out we've been going to eviction resistance too which is what happens in spain when the bailiffs are dragging people out get as many people outside their property and don't let the bailiffs in and it has been really effective because these people are having we're forcing the council to rehouse them otherwise they will be shipped off out of london it's part of the gentrification of london Focus started a campaign, it's called the Kinga campaign, and this campaign is to reinvent squatting with, as pop-up tenancies. Southwark Council and Lambeth Council will advertise for people to take on shops on a pop-up tenancy, so that you can go, you can get an empty shop, and you can start a shop anytime you want at the moment. But if you've got nowhere to live, you can't get anywhere to live. The it wasn't done by the theatres, the people that work there, really. The people that work yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, Fantastic. Yeah. As a response to this girl. did London Cowboys do? We did three studio albums, but one was never put out and went one live album. Which I thought over a career of 10 years was quite adequate. Yes. 
underachieving Ooh. really, you know, <laughs> as usual. But, but. An album every two or three years is about right, isn't it? Was Susie Sue in the band? No, she was never in the band. Sid? I spent was Tony She's the only the I tell you Susie Sue, who hate me for four years and I bumped into the venue and said, Hello Steve. Oh no, what are you talking to me now? <laughs> yeah. So oh you know, I thought she hated me, but then anyway, I went home with her. We played records all night. And we sort of had like, I mean, it's the only person I've ever had sex with up here. Because <laughs> you know, if we'd actually done the wild thing, I think we would have just disappointed the idea of what we might have had with each other. And she had the boots up there. And I thought, no, 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 you know, we're not going to do this. We're yeah, sure sometimes. Do you know what? Head. The best sex I ever had with, that like, I never had, but I had it up there. <laughs> I, I just, with Susie Sue? With Susie Sue, yeah. Wow, that's I, I, a good she story. wouldn't lie about it. I know she'll validate me. Was Sid Vicious in the band as well? No, Sid was this never in like the London Cow. He was the Idols in New York, back right. to Mark. Right. And um, Mick Jones played one night on the first night, and then Sid hated the fact he just played the guitar all night. So he said, I don't know, I mean, look, I just, you just play, right? When you're running along with that lead guitar shit. So Mick didn't do the rest of the gigs. So, I mean, you've been doing music all the time, haven't you? You've done different things. 75 it was my first gig. Chiswick Polly. I see who was in a band. Mick Jones on guitar, Free Clash. Uh, Brady from the Hollywood Brats on guitar. Honest John Plain from the Boys on drums. Wow, it's so And the bass is Brady like, at the other Right, right. World, no, isn't no, it? no, he's a good drummer, John Plain. Plain's like Simon Kirk from Bad Company. Does a great Simon Kirk. Mm. And the bass player's name was John, I don't remember his last name, but he was in a band called Violet Night with Kelvin and Brady. I can't remember John's last name. Brady was here the other week, wasn't he? Was yeah, with the London, the London SS. SS, another band. Well, that was said that, that the London SS, I, you know, everyone was in that band, including me. Yeah, were I, you in them? I auditioned for it. Oh, right, that's yeah, right. For Burning yeah. Roads, I was 16, so no, you know, 82. You know. Give you a couple of years, you'd be good. And he was actually right. My son's doing really well, by the way. Jez Dior, he's a rapper. Yeah, wow. is he? Yeah, and he's referencing me as a really bad parent in his songs, which is okay. And he's he, well, he, he got parent? three million hits on Spotify on his just on his new track. Jazz right. Dior. Yeah, he, yeah, he's be, he just turned down Atlantic, offered him four hundred fifty grand. He said no, no, no. So he's with Capital now, courting him. Wow, he's That's fucking. Amazing. Is he really good? Yeah, yeah. He was MTV mu uh, Music's Breakout Artist of the Year, not two thousand thirteen. Wow. Jazz Great. Dior. Yeah, check him out. I will. Telling me I'm like your dad, right? Uh, my dad, yeah, that's sad, right? And you're mad, so I go off to all of this shit this love costs you. And that perfume is a costume, passing out in that wash room. Feeling like ghosts are watching you, feeling like most are awful too. Were you hanging out with Didi Ramon? Yeah, of course I was, yeah. We actually bumped you into, I was at the Chelsea cool and he group. was there, we bumped into each other. And um, he came down to my, into my, uh, into my room and in a shoebox under his arm. And he had his <laughs> guitar and a little pig nose. Yeah. I said, well, well, I'm thinking, what's in the fucking shoebox? <laughs> so, 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 hey, so Diddy, what's in the shoebox? Oh, uh, and he opened it up, and in the shoebox, in the corner, was a little pile of weed. Yeah. But, you know, like in the corner, this giant, you know, it was just a, quite a nice pile of weed, but, it, it, you know, so that was in the shoebox, so we smoked. And he's a little fan of pig nose, and we were trying to write a song all night. He in found the out, what he found out that night, he said, I, I'm leaving tomorrow. He said, I just found out my dad's dying, and I've got to go back to Cleveland tomorrow. So we had one night. So I said, all right, here's what we do. We'll come up with a title, like a Ramones type title. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be there. All right, and then we'll write the song. Right? So even though there's nothing in the Ramones. Right. I just thought that was an easier way. So for a couple of hours, he's smoking. He's coming. I got, I got one. I go, what is it? He goes, I'm going down to the store to buy some Swiss cheese. I go, no, no, no. I'm not, just, <laughs> that wasn't the title, and I can't learn. How about, I don't want to be in the Ramones anymore. And that, for example, anyway, two hours later, nothing. And then all of a sudden, I got it. I got it. I go, yeah, what is it? He goes, nothing's gonna change. The whole world's against me. Wow. And I looked at it and went, <laughs> oh my God. I said, that is it. And I looked at him and I said, what is going on in your head? I didn't, that was in my head. He, was, he did have But I just, that's the song anyway. So, so it's that, half written. 
Nothing's oh, going to change oh. the whole world against me. The whole world was against him sometimes, <laughs> I think. Well, like, the, the worst thing is, uh, I live in Ventura County, and then the Chinese Dragons were booked to play there, and the sport band was a guy, the drummer, who used to work for me as a painter, and, and he arranged a meeting to have lunch with him. The morning of that day was the day that I found out he'd OD. So I, I hadn't seen him since New York, and then I was going to meet him again, and, it, and I didn't get Aww. to, because it was the day that... I didn't get to do lunch with me, you know, but I'm kind of sad about that. But I thought I, I did get the evening at the Chelsea, which is priceless. Don't lean on that and get electrocuted. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I lose you. <laughs> Does Tommy do all the interviews with you? I've been working together I don't, for about seven years I don't years make now. a move without Tommy. Yeah. yeah. Why is mad? He knows me. If I'm on my own, I'm just like, I'm wild. Just a bit yeah. too wild. Really. Well, so, there's a know. big buzz about the gig tonight. I hope so. I hope so. In, so. I hope so. Because I don't do this very often and I just want to put my toe in the water. You know, they asked me to do the O2 and I said, mm, yeah. <laughs> Daily Mail wanted me to put out a free record. And I was like, oh, yeah, all that. No, not yet. Yeah, later. <laughs> <laughs> this one's called Hanging on a Backside of Something Good for Pixie of the Heart. Just walked in. I'm 